Yeah, look, this all stems from a report that uh, International Human Rights Group did last month, which has found that China has set up 80 or so, perhaps more, of these so-called police contact points in cities across the world. Now, these aren't physical police stations as, as such, but they're essentially uh, informal outreach centres for Chinese police and the Ministry of Public Security. Now, exactly what they're used for is a bit of a matter of contention. China says that they're only run by volunteers and they're simply to help uh, China Chinese citizens who happen to be in those cities or in those countries with things like documentation, particularly Chinese government documentation. But human rights groups are much more sceptical. They say they believe there's every chance that these contact points or informal police outreach uh, posts are being used for more nefarious purposes, uh, including potentially using them to monitor dissidents uh, or, to, uh, or to intimidate people uh, who are wanted by Chinese police back home. So they're very contentious. Now, the ABC uh, uncovered when this report came out evidence uh, that uh, some police anyway in China were celebrating the establishment of a contact point uh, connected with police in a southern municipality uh, which was apparently established in Sydney in 2018. There was a ceremony held uh, in 2019 to celebrate this. Uh, there was enormous confusion as to whether this contact point was still happening. When the ABC at the time contacted uh, the organisation in Australia that was meant to be hosting, they said it didn't operate. Uh, but then police in China said that they thought that it was operating. So perhaps that's why senators were so keen today to, to press the Australian Federal Police about this story. And the AFP basically said today that they didn't believe that this contact point was, uh, was uh, actually active at the moment. And they agreed if it was, then it was in breach of a range of agreements between China and Australia uh, and would present some serious problems and, uh, and heartache for the Australian government, which of course uh, regards and guards its sovereignty on Australian soil very carefully, particularly when it comes to policing matters and particularly when it comes to China, which has uh, launched a number of uh, renditions uh, from overseas countries uh, over the years. So a fascinating uh, little episode at Senate Estimates. Clearly the AFP is monitoring this closely. The organisation says there's no evidence that this is happening, but it's clearly something that has been going on globally and something the AFP has a very close watching brief for. The AFP has also said it's continuing to share intelligence with Myanmar police, and this is even after the military coup last year. Yeah, that's right. This is another interesting snippet that came from uh, Senate Estimates hearings in Canberra today. Of course, after the military coup last year, uh, several Australian government departments, including the military and the police, effectively stopped or, or pressed pause on a whole lot of engagement with uh, the military and the police, uh, in part to register Australia's abject shock and horror and deep, deep anger at what's happened in Myanmar. Not just the illegal coup, but also the, the following, uh, or the, the violence that followed against protesters, which has left thousands of people dead. Now, interestingly, the AFP did say that despite the fact that actually paused a lot of their engagement programs and training programs with police in Myanmar in the wake of the military coup, they hadn't actually stopped sharing intelligence. In particular, they said that there was still a flow of intelligence both ways when it comes to uh, intelligence. Uh, in particular, they implied when it comes to the uh, international drug trade. AFP officers pointed out at the hearing that some 70 70% of the methamphetamines that hits Australia's streets is often sourced through Myanmar or from Myanmar, and therefore it's uh, crucial to maintain at least some lines of communication with authorities in Myanmar, uh, despite our uh, horror of what's happening there. And Stephen, we've also heard more detail about the nearly $46 million allocated to the AFP for Solomon Islands. Is there anything there that might raise alarm bells with the people of Solomon Islands? Look, quite possibly, but it's difficult to say because we're still trying to get to the bottom of this. This is the third interesting snippet we got from the Australian Federal Police uh, at Senate Estimates hearings uh, today. Three little nuggets of gold in, uh, in, in quick succession, uh, which shows the value of these hearings. Now, uh, we know, or we already know that the Australian Federal Police is moving to arm the Solomon Islands Police Force. We saw last week the uh, Australian Federal Police handing over some 60 semi-automatic rifles uh, 
to police in Solomon Islands. That's deeply contentious because of the history of violence in Solomon Islands and the history of militias taking armaments from police uh, armories and then using them against the population and one another. Uh, the opposition, for example, in Solomon Islands has accused Australia of militarising the country. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the AFP said uh, in the hearing today that there were other initiatives they were pursuing. Now, it's not entirely clear whether this is all within that same $45 million bucket of money, uh, which is largely used to keep AFP officers in the country to help maintain calm, uh, or whether this is another budget line that we just haven't spotted yet. Hopefully we get a more information on that soon. Uh, but what is clear is that the AFP has a pretty wide level of ambition here for what it wants to do. Uh, the um, AFP Chief Operating Officer talked today about the AFP accelerating rearmament. Um, that might be beyond what we've already seen with the guns given last week. Also talked about establishing a training centre for uh, riot control. Um, that's one thing that we're still waiting for details on, uh, as well as uh, providing a few more details about the, uh, the uh, announcements last week, which saw uh, a number of vehicles handed over. What we get from all of this, I think, Yvonne, is a really clear picture that Australia's ambitions when it comes to the RSIPF, the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, remain really, really expansive. Australia is determined not to cede ground to China here as it expands its own police cooperation efforts. Uh, and Australia is willing to uh, plough quite a bit of time and, more importantly, money into this effort to try and cement its position. Now, whether handing over guns is a wise move or not is a slightly separate question. That's contested uh, by many people in Solomon Islands. But what Australia is signalling is that it's willing to stump up cash, personnel and effort to try and cement its position as Solomon Islands' security partner of choice. Fascinating. Stephen, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for having me, Yvonne.